Welcome to Atma the Infinite Art and today we are learning the lasso tools in Photoshop. This is the second part of the selection tools in Photoshop series. Links of the other parts are in the description. The group of lasso tools is located here. We have the lasso tool, polygon lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. With the lasso tool, you can make free form selections like you are drawing with a pencil or a pen. Let me show you make a free form selection with the lasso tool around this leaf. To complete the selection, you can either try to close the selection manually or you can just release the cursor wherever you are and it will complete the selection. This option lets you create new selections. This option lets you add to an existing selection. This icon lets you subtract from an existing selection. This icon lets you make selection at the intersection of two selections. But if I draw the selection here outside, there will be no intersection point and it will show an error. Next is anti-alias. But what is alias? Think of alias as rough distorted edges. So that makes anti-alias plain or smooth edges. So with the anti-alias unchecked, if we make a selection, the edges will be rough. To preview that, press Q. And with the anti-alias checked, if we make a selection, the edges will be plain or uniform. Press Q again to get out of this preview mode. With the feather set to 0, if I now make a selection, the edge of the selection will be hard. But if I set a positive value in the feather and then make the selection, the edge will be soft. Now I will not discuss select and mask in this tutorial. It is a subject of its own and needs a separate video. Next we'll look at the polygon lasso tool. With the polygon lasso tool, you click many points to make a polygonal selection. You can complete or close the selection by going to the starting point where you see a white circle which is when you click and close it. The other way will be you can double click at your last point and it will close the selection. Instead of double click you can also use control plus click. To draw straight perpendicular lines press shift. I'll just double click and close the selection. The polygon lasso tool has the same options as the lasso tool so I'll not discuss them again. The magnetic lasso tool detects the edge of an object and draws a selection along the edge. So you can see when I hover the tool along the edge of the leaf, it attracts the tool and makes the selection. Here when you come to the start of the selection, you see this circle which is when you click and close the selection. It's made a pretty neat selection of the leaf. You can press Q and preview the selection. Press Q again to get out of the preview mode. Now these options are already discussed in the previous tool so I'll skip them. What I will discuss is this width option. To show what width does, I will press caps lock. The cursor changes to a circle with a crosshair or a plus at the center. The crosshair places anchor points at the edge of an object. And the circle is the area from where the tool detects the edge of an object. Now 
One thing I forgot to mention is that you can also manually place your own anchor points if you think that the tool is not doing a great job at picking the edges. So I can click here to create an anchor point here. You can change the size of the circle by going to width and then changing the value there. Or you can use the square brackets to increase or decrease the size of the circle or change the width. A smaller circle will of course get a smaller area from which the tool can detect the age of an object so it will take a little bit of caution and time for you to select the object properly. Also, we usually use a smaller width when the background is a little busy and complex and not as plain as this. We use a bigger width or circle when the background is plain as this one and easy to detect. Next is contrast. Contrast means age contrast. It means how much of a difference in hue or brightness must an object and the background have to consider something as an edge. For sharp objects like maybe a black object on a white background you can use higher contrast like 100% and on faded images where the edges cannot be easily distinguished you can use a lower contrast. Next is frequency. Frequency determines how often the anchor points will be placed in a selection. So with the frequency set to 11, notice how less often the anchor points are placed in the selection. But if I give it a greater value, say 50, you will see there will be more anchor points placed. You will need less anchor points for simple objects and more anchor points for intricate and complex objects. When you go about selecting an object and drop an anchor point on the wrong spot, either manually or by the tool itself, you can delete the anchor point by hitting backspace. Keep hitting backspace to delete the previous anchor points one after the other. And this brings us to the end of the second part of the selection tools in Photoshop. Check the other parts as well. Bye!